Good morning. Welcome to worship. And as we begin, you know, this is a special weekend, and it is amazing that you all remembered we were gathering for worship at 9 o'clock this morning. So very good for you. Uh, but secondly, uh, uh, this is Memorial Day weekend, and of course, really emphasizing the fact that uh, we need to protect the unity among us, as this, this has its roots in the Civil War, and also that we honor those who have offered themselves in the, in the defense of the freedom that we so much enjoy. And so, as we begin, I'm just going to ask any of you who have been in military service, would you please rise? I want to thank you for your service. Oh, stay standing, please, because the rest of us are going to join you. Let's all rise as we begin. And we gather in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. Your compassion, forgive us our sins known and unknown, things done and left undone. Uphold us by your Spirit so that we may walk, live in, and serve you in newness of life to the honor and glory of your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now may Almighty God have mercy on you and forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ and strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen.
The Lord be with you. Together, let us pray. Almighty God, you are the origin of everything. Everything you have created is an outflow of your love. Continue to refine in us the wisdom of your creation and our special place in it. We ask this through Jesus Christ, your Son and our Savior. Amen. Now may the peace of the Lord be with you always. Please turn to your neighbor and share with them a sign of our Lord's peace. A reading from Genesis chapter 1. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. And God said, let there be a dome in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. So God made the dome and separated the waters from where that were under the dome from the waters that were above the dome. And it was so. God called the dome sky and there was evening and there was morning the second day. And God said, let the waters under the sky be gathered together into one place and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth and the waters that were gathered together he called seas. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let the earth put forth vegetation plants yielding seeds, and fruit trees of every kind on earth that will bear fruit with the seed in it. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed of every kind, and trees of every kind bearing fruit with the seed in it. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, And there was morning, the third day. And God said, let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night. And let them be signs for seasons and for days and years. And let them be lights in the sky, in the dome of the sky, to give light upon the earth. And it was so. God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to give them light upon the earth, 
to rule over the day and over the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fourth day. And God said, let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth across the dome of the sky. So God created the great sea monsters and every living creature that moves of every kind with which the waters swarm and every winged bird of every kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them saying, be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters of the seas and let the birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fifth day. And God said, let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things and wild animals of the earth of every kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind and the cattle of every kind, and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let us make humankind in our image, according to our likeness, and let them have dominion over the, sea of the, over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and over all of the wild animals of the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God, he created them, male and female. He created them. God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, See, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree with seed in its fruit. You shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the air, and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything, that has the breath of life, I have given them green plant for food. And it was so. God saw everything that he had made, and indeed, it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. The word of the Lord. Thank you. Our responsive reading is from Psalm 19. The heavens are telling the story, the glory of God, and the firmament proclaims his handiwork. There is no speech, nor are there words. Their voice is not heard. which comes out like a bridegroom from his wedding canopy and like a strong man runs its course with joy. A reading from Hebrews chapter 11. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Indeed, by faith our ancestors received approval. By faith, we understand that the words were prepared, that the worlds were prepared by the word of God, so that what is seen was made from things that are not visible. The word of the Lord. Please stand as you are able for the reading of our gospel. 
Our gospel this morning comes from John chapter 1, verses 1 through 5. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, was with God and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. Here ends the reading of our Lord. Please be seated, and kids want to come on up. Did you guys get your Play-Doh this morning? Well, if you didn't, you didn't. If you didn't, you're welcome to grab some on your way out. Did you make something really cool with it, Hayden? Yeah? What did you make? A flower. Awesome. Did you show mom and dad? Yeah. We're always really super proud of the things that we make, right? What would happen if Silas would have came and squished your flower? Would you have been mad? Would there have been a little bit of a fight? Yeah. Silas, would there have been a fight? Yeah, there would have been payback, right? Yeah, because we do, we are, we are, we're proud of the things we make. And so this morning, we were talking about God being our creator, that he created everything, right? He created the whole world. He created you, and he created you, created mom and dad and grandma and grandpa and he says it was good he is proud of the things that he makes he wants good for the things that he makes he does not want the big brother to come and destroy anything right he wants it all to look amazing like he intended it and so that is what we have to remember that God made you and he likes who you are. He loves who you are. He wants you to shine for everybody. He wants to show you off to everybody. Do I have to start over? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Gabby says, yeah. <laughs> but God created all of us. And God created us to be exactly who we are. And he's so very proud of you. And that's why when you leave today, you make sure if you didn't already, you grab Play-Doh. Because when you make something, it's yours. Just like God made you. And he says, you're mine. Isn't that cool? Yeah. So the next time you're playing with Play-Doh, or you're going to remember that, oh yeah, we create something, we like it, we're, we're proud of it, we want to show mom and dad, and that's exactly what God did with us. We're like his Play-Doh, okay? Will you pray with me? Dear God, thank you so much. Thank you for making each of us so special. Thank you for that you have created us to be who we are and that you love who we are and you are proud of who we are. Lord, continue to work in our heart hearts so that everyone can see what a special creation we are. In the precious and holy name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. All right, you want a treat? Here we go. You guys don't get the opportunity or the privilege to hear the kids up here and some of their, their little comments, but it's really fun when there's new candy in the box because, yes, Skittles, finally. <laughs> hmm. Grace 
to you and peace from our God and our creator and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So we are starting this morning our summer series on the book of Genesis. Many of you who've read Genesis are probably going, oh no, that's a lot for one summer. But we've, we've done our best with God's leading to bring you the entire book of Genesis in overviews this summer. Um, it's really important to know our beginnings. And like many of us, you know, there was once a boy whose grandma told him stories of his beginnings. She told him stories of his heritage. The stories she told took him back to her grandparents. And beyond that, to their grandparents, to a time dating back well into the 1700s. When the boy grew to be an adult, he was still intrigued by the stories, and he wanted to document their authenticity. So he started digging and researching and traveling and asking questions. It took Alex Haley 12 years to write the book, Roots. We each have roots. A large part of our population seek to know more about family history. That's why sites like Ancestry.com are subscribed by millions and millions of people. We also all have special memories, family experiences that we don't want to forget. Roots are important. They give a person our identity. And it's Memorial Day weekend. We know that our nation has roots. We celebrate the history. We celebrate those who have given all for our lives. And our congregation has roots as well. We all have spiritual roots. Some of them do, are planted right here at Gloria Day. Others have spread throughout the world. But there are two questions which almost every person asks at some point. They ask, where am I from? And where am I going? Or why am I here? We know our past and we want to know our future. The book of Revelation ultimately answers the second question about the future and the end of the world as we know it as best we can. But Genesis is the book of our theological roots. It's the answer to where am I from? We see that everything starts right there. I know there are a lot of theories and myths surrounding creation. You know, scientists tell us that the universe always existed in some form or fashion, that at least there was some kind of concentrated energy before a big bang or something happened. But if we take Scripture seriously, there was a definite beginning point and before that point, nothing ex existed except for God himself. Neither Jesus nor any of the apostles viewed the story of creation as a legend or a theory. They, they saw it as fact. They viewed the Bible as a whole and completely true. So they never questioned creation. We too can trust this is our starting point for truth. It answers the crucial questions which have influence on our life and our future. The where am I from? Why am I here? In the beginning, God created. Isaiah 44 verse 24 says, Thus says the Lord, 
your Redeemer, who formed you from the womb. I am the Lord who made all things, who alone stretched out the heavens, who spread out the earth by myself. Before the creation of the universe, before our world, before time, and before life, God existed. The Hebrew word bara appears in the first verse of Genesis, and it means to create from nothing. Only God can create from nothing. He created what? He created everything. He created time in the beginning, those first words. For the first time, there was a beginning. That clock finally started ticking. Going further, God created the heavens. And then thirdly, he created the earth. God created time, space, and physical elements. But there's something else that God created from nothing. He created life. That's something that no man can do. We cannot create from nothing. Sure, we can grow life from seeds, but no one can take those basic elements of nitrogen, oxygen, hydrogen, and all those other things that I have no idea what they even are. But they can't, we can't take them, add energy, and cause life to suddenly just appear. Only God one of the most common arguments against creation is the belief that the world simply couldn't be created by words. Yeah, I can't speak anything into existence. Our words aren't that powerful, or our lives, our lives would look pretty different if I was that, that good. Our world, with all the life in it, cannot be recreated from nothing. It's simply impossible. According to all we've been taught, all that we know about the world around us, it takes time for things to grow. We know a tree doesn't just spring up overnight. But don't forget what Luke chapter 18, verse 27 says. What is impossible with men is possible with God. We serve the God who does the impossible. We serve a God who stopped the sun during the time of the judges. We serve a God who stopped or parted the waters so the Israelites to, could cross from Egypt. He caused a worldwide flood to sweep over the earth. He raised the dead. He walked on water. And he caused faith to spring up in your heart. Those are impossible things, according to science. But they're not too hard for our Lord. So when God speaks, something happens. If you think about the most powerful or influential people in the world, we give them so much credit, or in some cases, blame, and they have power. They have power to give orders and people listen. But how long does it take in the follow through? Sometimes months or years. Maybe it never does get done before someone else better comes along. We see in Genesis 1 that when God speaks, something happens immediately. The creation of all things is by the power of God. And that sounds simple. That sounds majestic. We don't need grand outlines of what took place or the nitty-gritty details. And we wouldn't have time today in this message to figure out how it all happened anyway. 
But we just need to know God's word is all-powerful. And when he speaks, something happens. When we read Genesis 1, we see that every step in creation was planned and prepared for the existence of life on earth. Imagine building a house. Some of you don't have to imagine it. You're in the middle of it. But first, you need a plot of land. And then you must have the foundation dug. The same thing with the creation of the world. God created the heaven and the earth. His foundation was laid. And now the, many, the house with many rooms can be built on that foundation. God is a planner. He had it all figured out. You know, none of us would build a house for it to be empty. So on the fifth and sixth day, God started filling his house with life. He filled the sea with fish. And then he filled the atmosphere with birds. On the sixth day, he filled the dry land with animals. And then finally, the greatest was human life in his image. And God blessed them saying, be fruitful and multiply. It's the lie of the enemy that there is no creator, that there is no need for God for the existence of the world and life. You know, that that lie tells us we need only a lot of time and some luck and then there will be life. That's not the teaching of the scripture. We're not a product of time and chance. It's simply a theory which has never been proven, not even once. Science has not been able to create even the most basic form of life. We're not a product of chance. We would not exist without our creator, God. Yes, God had a clear plan. He didn't just create the world and say, okay, go fend for yourselves now. He's interested in seeing his plan completed. In the beginning, God flung the stars into place and created the soil from nothing. In the beginning, God knew we needed a plan for the soil to be watered so we can receive our food from it. So the next time you water your yard or your garden, if it ever quits getting that natural rain, um, contemplate that creative word of God. He called the soil. He called the water into existence for your good and his glory. Job chapter 23 verse 14 says, For he will complete what he appoints for me. And many such things are in his mind. Many things are appointed for our lives. He has many things on his mind, not just in the big picture of creation, but in the individuals he creates. In you and in me. God promises to complete what he has planned for you. So what is the plan? From Psalm 19, verse 2 this morning, we read, The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament reveals his handiwork. Why were we created? Why do we exist on this earth? We're here in order to live for his glory. That's the ultimate plan for your life and for mine. Imagine if Rembrandt had painted one of his masterpieces, you know, a jaw-dropping and amazing work of art, and he gives it to the king as a present. If the king didn't hang it in the palace, Rembrandt Rembrandt probably would have been pretty ticked off, but it would have been a terrible shame as well. 
Rembrandt didn't spend so much time thinking and planning and creating this masterpiece in order for it to be placed in a closet. We are that masterpiece. We are created by God to be hanging in his palace. The book of Isaiah writes, Everyone who is called by my name, who I created for my glory, whom I formed and made. That's God's plan. His plan for our lives. Does everything you do, say, think, glorify God? Or do we try to paint our own name as the painter? Do we take credit for our own lives when we are created to bring praise and glory and honor to our creator? Everything God created was good. He said so. He doesn't make junk. When God speaks, it happens. And the earth proclaims his handiwork. The sky cried out. All creation showed the glory, the order, and the wisdom of God. The perfect order and synchronization with which the universe moves tells us that scientific community and human beings alike, it tells us that this is not a haphazard accident. The pre precise way in which our brain cells function, that the intricate interaction of single body cells, the depth of DNA within each human cell. It astounds scientific human minds. We talk and walk. We can move our eyelashes without ever giving it a thought. Because that's what God designed and planned. He designed and planned one of perfect order and harmony and peace. Billy Graham wrote, Adam and Eve, the first human beings, were created by their loving father, free to obey or defy their creator. In their obedience, they could, could find everlasting life. Adam and Eve, just like us, were called to be holy in their character. Holy for God. That's why God created. Let's live it out loud for our creator. Amen. Our May giving jar is for the Freedom Honor Flight. And so, young ones, when you see what you might be able to collect from us, and also, if you haven't signed the welcome pad, now is a good time to do that as well. And let us sing our next hymn.
Let's all rise. At Living Together in Trust and Hope, let us confess our faith in the words of Luther's explanation of the first article of the Apostles' Creed. I believe that God has created me and all that exists, that He has given me and still preserves my body and soul, my eyes and ears, my reason and all my senses, together with food and clothing, home and family, and all my property. Every day He provides abundantly for all the needs of my life. He protects me from all danger and guards and keeps me from every evil. He does this purely out of fatherly and divine goodness and mercy, though I do not deserve it. Therefore, I ought to thank, praise, serve, and obey Him. This is most certainly true. Would you bow your heads with me in prayer? Blessed are you, O Lord our God, creator of all things. Through your goodness you have blessed us with gifts of time, our possessions, and this planet. Use us and what we have gathered in caring for your world and your people with love. Father, as you sent your Son into the world, and he sent his apostles, so now also send your people that the world may know your name and the power of your creation and the salvation that comes by knowing your Son. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of hosts, we thank you for the many blessings you have bestowed upon us. On this Memorial Day weekend, grant us a long memory to recall those who gave the full measure of devotion to our country's peace and security. Bring to mind the sacrifices of those who served faithfully in the protection of our freedom and in the defense of our nation. We lift to you those who are currently using, that you are currently using to defend our nation. Namely, Alex Holly, Tim Davies, Brooke Carper, and Levi Lamb, and all who serve. Strengthen and protect them, Father. And Lord of the nations, since it is your will that we pray for all in authority, we believe with confidence that you hear our prayers for our president, our governor, the Congress, the legislator, legislature, and judges. Teach them the testimony of, of the truth. May they hear your word, that they may be wise and effective in their offices. For all of these, Lord, we lift them up to you, praying, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And God of hope and healing, uphold those who are suffering in body or mind this morning. We lift to you, namely, Laverne Nelson and Jean Hansen, Pete Jensen, Velma Lutz, Linda Stump, Serene Erickson, John Anderson, and Chad Tracy, and all others who are on our mind and heart this morning. May, they, may you reassure them that you are with them, and as you are with them, they cannot be shaken. Gladden their hearts and cause their tongues to rejoice and make their flesh dwell in hope. And we pray also for family and friends as they pray for Courtney and Tim and Patrice, Barb and Sharon, Cheryl and Talon and Lucas, Maria and Myrna, Rich and Ellie, Bruce and Emery, Abby and Linda and Peggy, Brett and Don and Alyssa, and all others that we name in our hearts before you at this time. And Lord God, comfort those who grieve as well. Assure them that through Christ we will all have everlasting life. For all of these we pray, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
And Holy Father, accept these prayers that we offer through your Son and our Savior, and as creator of all light and darkness, shine upon your creatures and eradicate all darkness that lies within them. Destroy the darkness of our sin that has caused in our lives. Help us to shine the light of your grace and truth. Bless the fields and the orchards with good weather, that all people may be well supplied and filled with the awareness of your mercies. Also, Lord, we ask your continuing blessings upon the, those graduating in this season, that they would be led with good confidence by your Spirit into the next steps of their lives. With that, Lord, grant that we may all show forth grateful and generous hearts within your church and in the world around us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Heavenly Father, as we set our summer schedules, we pray for your hedge of protection that stays around each one of us, that you continue to strengthen us and guide us, that your creation continues to glorify your great name. Into your hands we commend all for whom we pray, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now, Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and grant you his peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. As we prepare to dismiss, know that there's coffee and treats in our fellowship hall to, to spend this time and, and reconnect, uh, invest in one another. And also, uh, are there any other announcements that need to be given? Make sure that if you haven't already, 
Take Play-Doh home That's with right. you. We create and are proud of that. And a lot of times we forget how proud our creator is of us. So take that Play-Doh to remember that. Also, yes. Memorial Day weekend. So in my head, we jump, we're jumping ahead because I need to start planning for other things. So we are planning a fun 4th of July family event here after the parade which will include a new revised fun float and kids and dancing and singing through the parade. So if you're going to be around 4th of July, please, please, please let us know. We do need some men that can help Brian grill burgers and hot dogs. We're going to offer free burgers and hot dogs to people and, and, um, and have games and all kinds of fun stuff here for a few hours after the parade. So if you're going to be around for 4th of July, please, please, please put it on your radar and on your calendar and then let me know that you can be of some help and of course to start you to get you warmed up to that we also have the hunger haven that that uh, so if you need help or it's a